Hey, how's it going? Amadeus here from Cognito, and today I want to talk about my experience of studying medicine at Cambridge. Now, the aim is not to just bash Cambridge and talk about all the negative things. I think Cambridge is a great university, but it's not for everybody, and there are some drawbacks to going there. So, while most videos talk about Cambridge as being great, and there's a lot of hype around it, I want to kind of give the other side um, of the coin and talk about some of the downsides. As a bit of background, I did the three sciences and maths at A-level, and then spent six years at Cambridge. Then, instead of starting my job as a doctor last August, like everybody else in my year, I instead started a YouTube channel called Cognito, which makes animated-ish videos for GCSE science, like you can see here, with the aim of conveying all the information you need in a kind of quick and as interesting as possible manner. So if you're doing GCSE, or you know anybody who is, then feel free to check those out. I'll put the link in the description down below so you can have a look. Getting back to medicine though, medicine in the UK is normally a five-year course, but at a few universities like Cambridge, it's six years instead, because we spend a year intercalating and doing another degree. So to quickly break down the course, in the first two years of Cambridge, we do preclinical medicine, which kind of involves the theory and science behind the course. So we're doing our anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, kind of the stuff that a normal science degree would do, plus a few extra medical bits. But importantly, there isn't really any patient exposure. We don't actually talk to patients. Then after that, we intercalate for a year. So you often do things like pathology or pharmacology for an entire year, and you get a degree in that subject. But you can also do kind of more out there things. So I personally did zoology, which was all about climate change and ecology, and how we can respond um, to environmental change, which really had nothing to do with medicine at all. Um, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, a lot of medics do that as well. Then after we intercalate, we spend three years doing clinical medicine, which it still involves a lot of theory, but now we spend most of our time in hospitals, on the wards, learning from other doctors, and really just talking to patients all the time. So it's a big contrast between those last three years, where it's all clinical, and those first three years where it's pretty much all book-based. In contrast, most universities, which do a five-year medical course, have everything kind of spread out throughout the entire five years. So throughout the entire thing, you'll be doing a lot of book work, you'll be doing lectures, but you'll also be seeing patients from day one. So you go into hospitals, you go to GPs, you learn to take blood, um, you do all of that stuff far sooner than a Cambridge student would. So to compare these two, if you want a good science foundation, a good background in science, um, perhaps you want to be a researcher in the future, then Cambridge is great because you learn tons of details um, about kind of like molecular pathways and stuff, and you'll have an extra degree in a science subject. On the other hand, if you just want to become a good doctor and you want to better practice medicine well and treat patients, then all that extra information we learn at Cambridge and the extra year we spend learning is kind of unnecessary. It might just be a waste of time for you. The other thing about Cambridge, um, which is often talked about, is the workload. And there is a lot of work at Cambridge. But not only is there a lot of work, but a lot of it seems kind of pointless. So in our first three years, we were doing maybe two to three essays every week. And some of these were kind of relevant, but most of them seemed completely redundant. So like we would have essays on things like, um, what are the pros and cons of the glenohumeral joint, which is your shoulder joint and you'd have to write a thousand words on that. And the sort of research you do for it and the information you learn and put into the essay is really going to be of no benefit to your life as a doctor whatsoever, even if you do somehow remember it all. On top of all of those essays, which took ages, you also have about 20 hours of practicals, lectures and supervisions, and then have to revise for those outside of that as well. So there really was a lot of time that you had to put in um, to just get by really, not even to excel on the course, just to do the bare minimum. For me personally, I didn't really mind this because I quite like studying. I'm quite happy to kind of sit in my room and revise for long periods. It doesn't really bother me, but for a lot of people, I think it was quite stressful and it takes a lot of time away from what you would otherwise be doing. So if you have hobbies and you want to go see your friends and stuff, that's quite hard when you're trying to balance essays, revision, and going over lectures. And when it comes to exam time, everybody's just working kind of flat out. So loads of people are in the libraries all the time, people put off their hobbies and their friends, and they just work solidly. Um, 
and it's kind of made worse by the fact that our exams are 50% essay based. So you'll just have these completely obscure essays you have to prepare and prep for. So even when you're doing all this learning, which could be really valuable, you're kind of covering the stuff which you know isn't going to be useful to you. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, my aim here isn't to moan about the course. I personally really enjoyed it and loved the people that I met there and really enjoyed being able to do zoology um, as I thought it was a really good break for medicine. But there are downsides to it. And so far, I've just kind of like ran through what the chemistry course is like. But now I want to go through a bit more specifically some of the downsides. The main thing to point out is that it's a very stressful course. So if you're the sort of person who feels stressed around exam time and you get anxious when you have like a big workload that you have to get done, then Cambridge is not necessarily going to be the best choice for you. Um, another point is that it's a big change from school. So if you're used to being in the top of your year, you might then get to Cambridge and realise that you're average or you're kind of in the bottom of the pack, which obviously isn't a problem by itself, but you have to be prepared that that is possible. There can also be a strong sense of competition, and you sometimes feel as though you're being pitted against other people um, in your year. So instead of working collaboratively, everybody can be a bit guarded. Now, this definitely isn't always the case. Um, a lot of people do share their resources and get on really well, but I think this kind of um, pitted against each other nature happens a lot more at Cambridge than it does at other universities. The course at Cambridge is also arguably outdated, with its focus on like preclinical versus clinical and all the essays that we have to do. It doesn't really seem relatable to real medicine, and I don't think there's much evidence that it's a better teaching course at all. And the other point to bear in mind is that all medical degrees are basically the same. When you apply for your first job, you don't in any way say where you went to university. And as you go forward in your career, it doesn't really matter that much. So this idea of Cambridge prestige, which is going to help you later on, is really not as big a deal as you might think. Overall, I would say that the most important thing when you decide which university to go to, and which course to do more generally, is consider your own mental well-being. If going to Cambridge is going to make you really stressed and anxious, and you're going to end up being unhappy because of all the work you have to do, then it's not worth it. You're really not getting that much out of having a Cambridge degree to justify putting yourself through that. On the other hand, if you don't think you'll get stressed and you don't really care about all the work and you maybe really want to do research in the future so you'd like the extra science background, then great, Cambridge would probably be perfect for you. I just think at the end of the day, you should consider your own personal well-being and how you'll enjoy the course before you consider the prestige of the degree that you're going to get at the end particularly because that's not worth all that much in the case of medicine. But anyway, that's just my personal opinion um, and what I kind of gathered from talking to other medical students because all medical students like to moan about their degrees. Um, if you want to hear me talk about anything else, then please do uh, leave us a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you. And if you're doing GCSEs or you want to catch the upcoming revision series I'm going to do, then check out our videos on Cognito, the link's down below. Uh, otherwise, cheers for watching.